The power of persistence in wholesaling real estate. Guys, it's Rick Ginn. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to overcome any obstacle with persistence. And I'm also gonna teach you how to use persistence to pull any government list you're trying to get. But before I get into it, do me a favor, make sure you smash that like button, you hit that subscribe button to continue to receive the best up-to-date information on wholesaling real estate. So persistence. You guys hear it all the time. What does it mean and how can we use it in wholesaling real estate? Well, I'm here to tell you, let's just break down the definition of persistence. Persistence is the firm continuance of doing something in spite of an obstacle. That's it. And I'm here to let you in on a little secret. Persistence is the key ingredient to becoming a successful wholesaler. I'm gonna tell you right now, I've never met a wholesaler that was successful, that was not persistent. So if you know that, embrace it. In this video, let's break down how to use persistence and specifically how to use it in wholesaling real estate. Persistence beats resistance. That's a quote by Rick Ginn. And that quote holds true today more than it ever has before. Persistence is basically when you have something come up, it jumps up in your face and you have to make a decision whether to quit or to move forward through the obstacle. And I'm here to tell you, most people just quit. Actually, this is the main reason why people fail at wholesaling. I tell everybody, Zach tells everybody, when you get into wholesaling, you are going to have a ton of obstacles. The question is, are you going to have the willpower to get through it? So now that you know what persistence is, let's break it down and see how we can use persistence and wholesaling to your advantage. So the first thing you have to achieve is a positive mindset. Without a positive mindset, persistence isn't even doable in my opinion. If you're constantly negative and you're trying to talk yourself out of something before it even begins, you're not gonna get very far. So if you have a negative mindset, you have to address this up front. How do you do it? Listen, just change the way you're reacting to people. Number one, go on YouTube, check out some Tony Robbins videos, get pumped up and understand your attitude is everything. If you have a negative mindset, you will not be able to crack the code to persistence. Number two, which is a big one, full immersion. That's right, you have to immerse yourself in wholesaling real estate. How do you do that? Just go over to freewholesaling.com. We have 27 years experience between me and my son on how to be a successful wholesaler from start to finish to your first deal and to your first 100K. Make sure you immerse yourself in that material and just go through it. I would go through it nine or 10 times. If you decide to spoon feed here and there, it's not gonna work. Immerse yourself in the material. The next one is perspiration. That's right, perspiration is just a fancy word for sweat. You are going to have to endure, you're gonna to have to grind, and a lot of you guys are gonna to have to use hustle to get through with your persistence. Why? Because I've never met anybody in wholesaling that didn't perspire at one point. Perspiration just means you're using a lot of energy, you're taking a lot of action, no matter what the outcome is. Guys, perspiration is the key to succeeding in wholesaling by using persistence. The next one, you're gonna have to learn the art of persuasion. Now over at freewholesaling.com, we teach you how to do this. We teach you how to use a script, how to use acronyms for your qualifying and how to convert them into conversations. The art of getting anything you want, including any type of list, any type of leads, or getting something from your sellers is, you're going to have to learn persuasion. Now in the beginning, you're not gonna be very good at it, and it's okay. This is where persistence gets you through this, so you can accomplish and knock over those obstacles, and in the trials and errors of doing it, you will become much more persuasive. Guys, you have to learn the art of persuasion. The next one is a huge part of persistence is being patient. So call it patience, patient, whatever you wanna call it. Sometimes things will not go the way you want them to. And sometimes you have to regroup and go at that specific obstacle with another strategy. And sometimes that's gonna require you to retreat, go back, let off some steam and revisit how you're gonna attack it. If it's in freewholesaling.com or you talk to a business partner, whatever it is, but sometimes we have to pull away to move forward. So we have to go backwards to go forwards. The only way you can do this with this patience. You see, you can't will your way through wholesaling the entire way. Sometimes you just have to be patient 
And honestly, sometimes doors close for a reason. They want you to revisit it with another tool. Guys, you have to put patience in your war chest for persistence because without it, you can't be persistent. And last but not least, I will tell you, this one is a non-negotiable one for persistence. You have to have personal accountability. What does that mean? It means when you make a mistake or you mess something up or you let your ego get in the way, you got number one, you got to raise your hand and go, man, I screwed up. I got to fix this. And how do you fix it? You, you acknowledge the mistakes you've made and then you regroup and figure another strategy to get through that obstacle. That is a sign of maturity. And I always tell everyone, if you will lose your ego, you can do amazing things in wholesaling. Your ego will guide you down dark paths that even persistence can't overcome. So personal accountability, address any issues that you might have come up and then fix them. How do you fix them? You have to recognize it first and go, hey, I did it. This is what I'm gonna do to fix it. I know I can make progress and move forward. I am a persistent wholesaler. If you're going through hell, keep going. This is a famous quote from Winston Churchill and it rings so true to all wholesalers. So many of you guys are looking for this magic formula like, Rick, I hit this resistance. I have this, this is becoming a problem. You have to learn how to be persistent to get through these obstacles. So go through the fire and just keep on going. So now let's specifically talk about how to use persistence to get any government list that you wanna go out there and chase. Now, full disclosure, you're rarely gonna get 100% because what a lot of you don't understand is you keep hitting roadblocks with your government list. So sometimes you have to think about your strategy and regroup. A lot of you go out there and scream, hey, it's public record, it's a probate, you have to give it to me. Or it's a code violation, it's public record, you have to give it to me. You're half right. It is a public record, but the challenge is you keep attacking public records. The reality is you are trying to access public records, but you have a firewall called a privacy policy. And here's the crazy part is, all these government lists, all these different lists, they all have a different privacy policy. They're there to drive you and me nuts, but here's what you need to do, okay. I'm not gonna attack public records anymore. I just need to figure out their privacy policy. Once you understand the difference between privacy policies and public record, you now can attack the privacy policy. Let's, so let's talk about how we're gonna attack the privacy policies. Number one is you're going to have to use those initial skill sets I taught you in the beginning of this video on how to become persistent with anyone. Number one, you have to treat them just like you do your sellers. So when you approach a government employee, say at the courthouse, they're regular people. So what do you want to do? The first thing we do is just kill them with politeness. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Whatever it is. And just be highly respectful of the position. That's number one. Number two, you need to build rapport with them. Why? Because when you build rapport, it is your gateway to have people put their guard down and gives you access to get the things you want. So once you build rapport, how do I do that? I'm looking at the pictures on their desk. I'm going to look at a family dog photo, whatever it is. And then I'm going to elaborate on that. Once I start building rapport, I'm going to convert that into a conversation. Guys, this sound familiar. It's exactly the same thing we do with our sellers. Once I do that, I'm going to do a simple little technique called compliment and ask, which means I'm going to pay him a compliment. I love your dog so much. It's such a beautiful German shepherd. Hey, by the way, how can I get access to your probates very nicely? So sometimes when you put a compliment and then ask a hard question after it, it offsets it. Don't ask me why, but it works. Now here's where the rubber meets the pavement. Okay. Maybe they give you an op. Well, I'm not allowed to get that information from you. Okay, so now we move into a strategy which we call the power of two. And basically it says, if you can overcome two objections, you can predominantly get most things you want from people. What happens when someone initially tells you no, most people quit. They're not persistent, you have to change that. So basically you wanna overcome that objection and ask another question. And it goes as simple as this, you don't, all you have to do is practice this. And she'll say, hey Rick, you know, I really cannot share that information. Hey Sally, I know you can't share that information, but if I was gonna ask you how I can work with your privacy policy so I can help out these sellers and get access to that public information, could you show me a route? Now, when she says no again, I'm gonna rewrap the question and ask it again. So between building rapport, having a conversation, doing the compliment and the ask, 
and doing the power of two, for the most part, you should be able to overcome most of these objections if you can get access to those government lists. Guys, use this. So many of you guys are running in Roblox in your government list and you are not order takers. I'm asking you to do what 95% of the population won't do in wholesaling real estate. So you have to think differently. Persistence pays off. Remember this, persistence crushes talent any day of the week. Give me someone who's persistent because they'll work every day. Give me someone who's got talent and with no persistence, they're a nightmare. I don't want anything to do with them. So the last part of this is I'm going to teach you how to convert persistence to perseverance. Persistence is the act of overcoming an obstacle once. It's short-term willpower and anyone can do it. It's like skipping a meal. Now, perseverance, that's different. That is the ability to have stamina and discipline to overcome any obstacle you have upcoming in wholesaling real estate and do it on a consistent basis every day. So perseverance is basically moving forward even after you've been defeated. Persistence is doing it one. My goal is to get you from a persistent wholesaler to a perseverance wholesaler because that's the person that's going to do it long term. How do you do that? Just start with persistence. Do the act once, then do it twice, then do it three times, keep doing it for 30 days. Then we can move you over to the perseverance column where you're going to do this mechanically every day in your wholesaling business. So let me wrap it up with this. The three P's of persistence, and it goes like this. Patience, persistence, perspiration, make an unbeatable combination for success. That's a quote from Napoleon Hill. Guys, persistence will make a huge difference in your wholesaling business. Once you learn how to do it and enable your persistent muscle, you can easily convert that to perseverance, which is what you're going to invoke in your wholesaling business from you and everybody you work with and everybody you come in touch with. Guys, let me know. Are you going to use persistence to convert it to perseverance in your wholesaling business? Are you going to use the power of two to get the yeses? Get your nose converted to yeses. Let me know in the comments, guys. I believe persistence is the missing ingredient on most wholesalers that are struggling in this business. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that, guys. And listen, if you like this video, do me a favor, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button to continue to receive the best videos on wholesaling today. Guys, this is Rick Ginn, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.